So this was a pretty good filler, I, I'd say. I'd say these are the type of fillers that we kind of need within the XY anime series. <laughs> Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Bizzle and welcome to another Pokemon XY anime discussion. Sorry this video is a little late, but uh, <laughs> I've had a little bit of computer issues uh, a couple of days ago or two days ago, I don't know how many days ago, and I just couldn't find the right time to record and accept now. Plus, I may have been a little bit too lazy. You know? <laughs> so anyway, let's get right into this or whatever. So to, in this particular episode, we're going to do a review of Chespin's First Errand, I believe is the title. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> sorry about that um there. I apologize. Sorry about that. Uh, I forgot that I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot that I didn't watch the preview and write down anything. So yeah, like I said, we have a chessman review, episode review, as well as uh, the next episode uh, discussion of breaks in and the lost stick and the broken stick. Breaksin's hearts are exploded in a million pieces. I, I think that's the title. Hold on, let me look here. A broken twig, a broken heart, breaks in strong feelings. Alright, so let's jump right into the chess pin episode, shall we? So, what I did is I made some notes of stuff wrote down, uh, you know, and then I'll talk about each a little bit note as much as I can, and we'll move on. I have, like, like almost 30 notes and some stray observations and stuff. So let's jump right into this. So, basically... The episode started uh, with Ash, Serena, Clement, and Bonnie getting out of the rain, and we have a nice moment of Serena like scrubbing Bonnie's head. I don't know if I'm gonna have that particular picture, but uh, you could probably look it up. Um, oh, I said um again, jeez. Uh, so suddenly, at some point, Clement gets really excited, and Bonnie. I will put a picture of this. Uh, Bonnie has a why you do that face sort of, you know, Bonnie was like enjoying the weather and then Clement got all excited talking about a weather machine, I think, or whatever it is. I think, I think Bonnie wanted to know when the uh, storm ended or something of that nature and, uh, Clement's like, yeah, I will use my weather machine and then the first reaction Bonnie had was like, Oh, I was having so much fun. Why would you do that? You know, because Bonnie, Bonnie knows all about Clement's inventions. And as you would expect, of course, the machine explodes because, uh, uh, because Clement was fiddling with it too much and it exploded. So then that's when we got the intro. Speaking of the intro, when are we going to go back to the original animation or when are we going to get some new animation going on? Yeah, you know, because, uh, great, Hoopa movie, great and all, but, uh, uh, we don't need to see it anymore. <laughs> At least I don't need to see it anymore. I don't know about you. Uh, um, I could Google what the old intro of the, uh, animation. So anyway, then after the, uh, the intro and the title screen, then we, then I think they're just, like, standing around or something, and then... Or, or it goes straight into the generator room where there's, like, dripping water dripping on it. And then all of a sudden it, like, crackles and frazzles and frizzles or whatever. And then the power goes out. Everyone's, like, kind of freaking out because, yeah, there, there's no power suddenly. That's something to freak out over. Well, it was mo mostly the Pokemon. And then Nurse Joy's like, don't freak out, don't freak out. So then Clement, Ash, Serena, Bonnie, or whatever, they go, hey, what's up? What's going on with the power? And then Nurse Joy says, Nurse Joy says something about, um, uh, said something about the generator. 
So then Clement gets uh, begins fixing the generator, but Clement has a great idea, and that's to use the electric Pokemon for temporary power. You know, just the emergency re reserves or something of that nature. So there's like a little bit of lighting, and I'm sure there's a little bit of other things going on, but it's not full power. And we have Lex Luxray, we have Pikachu, and we have Dedenne helping out and stuff. So then Serena and Bonnie help out Nurse Joy. Ash fixes, Ash begins to try to fix the roof. Um, he, uh, he first slips. He gets a little nervous. So sends out Frogadier and Halucha to help him. Frogadier uses Frubbles to, so Ash can get to the part where the water leaked down. And so then he has like these Pokemon to help him. And then we find out that uh, the fuse is broken. The generator fuse is broken because of the water, so the so they need another fuse. Uh, I I think Clement was like at first planning to go. Oh, we need a fuse. Uh, okay, so uh, I think I'm gonna just uh, walk over to that uh, building way over there and uh, and go buy a new fuse because uh, Nurse Joy didn't have any in stock. But then the machine exploded again, and Clement was freaking out. And he's like, no, I have to fix this machine. I have to fix the generator here right now. Uh, you know, I can't go going off getting a fuse. And then that's when Chespin comes out of the, the Pokeball and then offers to get a fuse uh, for Clement while Clement's too busy working for the generator. Clement thinks this is a great idea, but then he sends uh, Bunnelby with Cl uh, Chespin so Chespin doesn't go off doing crazy things. So... Then it switches over to Clement giving Chespin the coin purse or the wallet and puts it around his neck. And then Ash sees what's going on and then wishes them good luck. And so they're walking by. Uh, so then Team Rocket appears, of course, as usual. And they're like scheming as usual. So then it just turns to Chespin trying to have some fun. Bunnelby is not having it. No matter what, Bunnelby is not happy. I think the first scene was uh, Chespin holding up the coin purse or whatever, being all excited or whatever. Or it might have still been around his neck, actually. And then Chespin splashes into the puddle. The puddle lands on Bunnelby. Bunnelby doesn't get really happy. He angrily stomps it and stuff. Other moments include... Uh, Ch uh, include Chespin trying to get some food and then flirting with the Meryl, I believe. So then afterwards we get uh, Chespin uh, being all happy and raising his raising the coin purse wallet thing. And then Firo snatching it up. And the funny thing was, uh, b while this was going on, when they were like, uh, when Chespin was trying to get some food or flirting with the Meryl or whatever, there was this fun day out music where they're like, having a fun time, something like that, and then all of a sudden he raises it, and then right as the Firo snatched, the music just stopped instantly, and it was a pretty hilarious moment. I can't exactly show you, but I'll at least show the image where the where in the episode that actually happened, but it was pretty funny. So then Ash is done with his uh, working on the roof, so he comes in with Halucha and Frogadier, and then he ends up seeing Serena, Bonnie, and, and uh, dressed up as nurses, and I think Ash compliments them and says that they look like Nurse Joy or something along the lines of that. Again, I don't speak Japanese, so I don't know what was going on there. So then, anyway, we go back to Chespin and Firo, apparently, based on my notes. So, you know, at first, Chespin tries to use his vine whips to reach Firo, but uh, Firo is just too far away. So then Chespin gets this great idea of propelling Bunnelby towards Firo with a uh, vine whip, you know, like launching Bunnelby with uh, vine uh, with vine whip. And then Bunnelby isn't happy at first. You know, he's got like tears streaming down his eyes. He's like freaking out. But then eventually gets like really determined and mad because he's like, oh, that's, that's our coin purse that we need. So then he gets it. And then it just changed to Chespin and Bunnelby playing keep away with Firo. Here, Bunnelby. Here, Chespin. Oh, you're not getting it, Firo. But then they escape through a hole 
or whatever, and then afterwards they then end up seeing a village area where they end up going. Ash meets up with Kamat and says, hey, what's going on? What's taking so long, basically? And Kamat says that Chessman hasn't returned yet, and I guess Ash was getting a little worried, and, hey, Noibat appears! Yeah, all right. Uh, I'll get to that particular appearance in a moment after I'm done with this summary, but yeah. So then Noibat and Fletchender, they go and look up where Chessman is and stuff. So then Chessman and Bunnelby try to get out of this village area, uh, it kind of looks like they're lost or they're going the very long way because we see Chessman getting all tired and he's like trotting through. Bunnelby is pushing him. Come on, you lazy bum, basically. Uh, so, <laughs> so then they actually see the building where the fuse is at, I believe. I think it's like some sort of laboratory shop thing. That's what it looks like from the distance. So the, and then as they're walking towards the building, that's when Team Rocket really appear in the episode. They say their motto, of course, and then Team Rocket send out their Pokemon to try to fight Chespin and Punnelby. It's kind of even, I think, initially. Well, I mean, Inke and Gurga, Inke overpowered Chespin at first, but then they managed to do a lot better against, like, Gurgeist and, and Inke in general. So it's kind of, like, even for, like, they're kind of like even, like uh, Inke got Chespin, but then Chespin and Bunnelby deflected the attacks. Then Jesse has Gorgeist using Shadow Ball, and then we see a really cool moment of Fletchender slicing through the Shadow Ball, and Ash shows up and protects Bunnelby and Chespin. I kind of like this. I, I never did a review, but I did see the episode where Bonnie and Meowth disappeared. I kind of really enjoyed when the split Pokemon met up with Ash, I kind of liked the, um, I kind of liked when Luxray actually got on Ash and was kind of happy. It's kind of nice to see that the other group's Pokemon actually care about Ash in that particular regard. You know, you're not my trainer, but I really trust you and everything. And that's kind of what we got here, because Chespin and Bundleby, like, they kind of did their little, they kind of did their, like, sidestep, or whatever, behind Ash, and then they looked really happy because, hey, Ash is here. Ash is going to kick some butt. So then, but then suddenly, as Ash is trying to fight, Chespin and Bunnelby, uh, they, they, like, communicate with each other. Bunnelby digs under the ground, pops up, uses Mudshot to basically blind Team Rocket and all their Pokemon, and then Chespin uses Pin Missile to knock out Team Rocket, you know? So it, it's like... It's like Ash was basically their, like, uh, shield, basically. Hey, you, you just stay there. We'll think of some way to get rid of Team Rocket. You just stay there and take the brunt of the attacks, basically. So, Team Rocket is gone. Then, uh, so then Ash reminds Chessman to get the fuse, you know, that where he's from. So, we see Chessman waddling, waddling towards the laboratory-type area with Bunnelby so they get the fuse. Then it switches to cut to Clement thinking Chespin and Bunnelby. Clement pets Chespin really well because Chespin did a very good job. We also see that Pikachu and Luxray are very low on electrical energy because throughout most of this episode they've been like powering up the powering up the basics of the electricity throughout, you know, the I think well, I don't think they're floodlights, but you know, the basic lighting that some hospitals and some buildings have that's not full power but you can actually see backup lights I think is what they're called so then the generator is fixed power is restored thanks to Chessman and Bunnelby then we oh yeah but I didn't quite get uh, I did make a note of that later okay so then Bonnie is thinking <laughs> to Danny for its help. I will get to why that's funny in a moment, but yeah, you see Bonnie Bonnie going, here, Danny, you did a good job, and then you see Pikachu and uh, Pikachu and Luxray having sweat rolls. They're like, what? No, <laughs> you'll know why in just a moment, but anyway. So then Nurse Joy thinks Ash and company, because they had a lot more food than anybody else. Ash and company had like a feast. All the other people had like fruit bowls or something 
So then Clement gives Chessman a lot of extra food. Chessman is extremely happy. But then it turns out that Chessman eats too much and evolves into Quillot. And yeah, it actually evolved. No, I'm just kidding. But it, but it did look really big. It looked pregnant, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty funny. And then we get a very hilarious end where the narrator is talking and then all of a sudden Chespin screams and Clement screams. Because <laughs> I guess Chespin finally realized, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good time or whatever. Although I think this might be a little gruesome. I think what happened is in, in the back room where Nurse Joy was working on Chespin, I think what she did is she pushed the stomach down on Chespin and... Whatever came out, came out. <laughs> and that's why Chespin screamed and Clement screamed afterwards. But no, I don't think that's what happened. I just think Chespin realized that it ate too much. <sighs> so here's uh, some other straight observations that I'd like to note that are really interesting. That uh, were kind of separate from the summary or whatever. Uh, the first uh, observation is it was really nice to see all the Pokemon show up in some fashion or another. All of the group's Pokemon, Brakeson, Pancham, Dedenne, Luxray, Bunnelby, Chespin, Noibat, Fletchender, Frogadier, Halucha, Pikachu, all of those Pokemon showed up in this particular episode. And Brakeson and Pancham had basically a cameo role. They, like, appeared, said their name, basically, and I think that was, like, pretty much it, the last thing we ever, ever saw of them. All the other Pokemon got a little bit more screen time. Because I think uh, Pancham and Brakeson only showed up in one scene, but they did at least show up. Uh, and this is one thing that I really wanted to note that was pretty funny. Dedenne, felt, Dedenne was there attached to the electrical machine, and it was pretty funny that after it did its first time, after that, it was like sleeping throughout the whole entire thing. Be uh, they were still using their power, and Dedenne was just sleeping because Den Dedenne is a really, I don't want to say lazy Pokemon, but one of uh, Dedenne's traits is that it sleeps a lot. It sleeps at any time it can, so I think it's kind of a tired. I, I don't know if tired is the right thing. I don't know what you would... It may be lazy. I don't know. I can't imagine laziness just being about sleeping. Maybe if it was like lazing around on a couch, flipping on a t TV remote, eating junk food, maybe it would be lazy, but I don't know what you would want to call that. Uh, not Non-energetic, basically, except when it is energetic. But anyway, at the end, after Pikachu and Luxray collapse, suddenly Dedenne is like, huh? what's going on? Huh? Oh, hey, what's going on? Oh, we're still doing that thing? Or basically. So that that's what I mean by uh, back here when I said that D Bonnie was thanking Dedenne for helping and the Pikachu and Luxray are like, ah, no, Dedenne did no such thing. It did it for like one second and then it just fell asleep, basically. So then my last stray observation here is I do like how Chespin and Bunnelby took over and took out Team Rocket, but at the same time I'm disappointed that Noibat didn't do anything, uh, especially since it looked like Ash was going to send out Frogadier and Halucha to battle Team Rocket. It was, uh, it was kind of disappointing that Ash wasn't just going to use Fletchender and Noibat because Ash was getting ready to send out some Pokeballs, you know, so I, I am really kind of happy that Chessman and Bunnelby got to do something really important, but uh, I just, it's really disappointing that Noibat didn't really get to do anything in this episode, or even Fletcher, well, Fletchender did more than Noibat, I will say about that. Um, just as another side note, this is like a comparison because it's kind of funny how the drastic differences are from what we've seen before. Uh, th this particular whole thing reminds me of the whole Ash having Scraggy and Iris having Axu and they were young Pokemon. Axu was basically born right be like right at the beginning of the uh, Best Wishes series and then Ash later got Scraggy. And this was interesting because Iris was basically, I think, at some point accused for not doing very much. I think Ash was like, well, hey, why aren't you training Axie? Why don't we train Axie with Scraggy? Or maybe this happened even otherwise. I think it may have happened in the eighth episode or whatever. And 
Iris is like, I'll do whatever I want at my own pace. And then Clement's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's up to the trainer to decide what pace they want for their Pokemon. And then we have, like, Ash trying to train Scraggy as much as he possibly can here and there. Given best wishes what happened with that series. But here, on this thing, in this particular series with Noibat, Ash isn't doing a whole lot. Sure, Ash did train Noibat how to fly and everything, but... <laughs> When is it going to use battle moves and stuff? So hopefully, really soon, Noibat will be used. It's not going to be used next week, though, because uh, the voice actress for Noibat and Fletchender is voicing Gallade, which means that they're not going to show up except in Cameo at best because they would get priority in the VA list rather than some random character, Pokemon character of the day. So yeah, that was pretty much it. Like I said, this was a pretty good filler. This is the type of episodes we need to see. We need to see fillers that work on the Pokemon, their development. This was a very Bundle B and Chespin heavy focused episode. We got to see a little bit more of like Bundle B's personality basically because Bundle B from the other episodes that I've seen has just always just been there. It hasn't quite had much of a personality outside of being very determined. I did get that because Bundle B would have that determined look and you know, I think it even like smiled that uh, in the first episode or whatever when Pikachu was knocking it around or something because it found like a really good opponent or something like that. But Bunnelby has been determined, but we got to saw some other aspects to Bunnelby here. We, we saw how Bunnelby and all the other Pokemon basically are just annoyed by Chessman's antics. I think that's the hel most hilarious aspect of Chessman is all the other Pokemon are tired of Chessman's acts. Uh, uh, antics. Uh, Brayson was tired of Chespin in the Mammoth Swine and Bombastone episode. In this episode, Pikachu, Luxray, or even in the Noibat hatching episode, everyone was like, oh, why is Chespin eating a sour apple? <laughs> Basically, so that's all what it was. And in this one, Bunnelby was not having it at all. Neither were there other Pokemon, especially when at the end when Chespin was eating all the food and all the other characters were like, oh. <laughs> at least uh, Ash, Serena, and Bonnie were laughing a little bit or highly amused by this, but none of the other Pokemon were. <clears throat> so, yeah, that was pretty much it. Pretty good episode. Hopefully we'll get some other focus. Maybe we'll get like a, a Dedenne and uh, I don't know what other Pokemon. Uh, I don't know. Frogadier, that'd be an interesting combination, did it name Frogadier. But anyway, let's uh, I think that's pretty much covers that particular episode review and stuff. Like I said, good episode for a filler episode. Nothing happened uh, outside of uh, Chespin getting pregnant by eating too much food, apparently. But <laughs> so that's pretty much it. So then let's talk a little bit about the next episode, which is the break uh, breaks an episode. So in the preview, I wrote some notes here. Brakeson's stick is broken. Brakeson freaks out. It's like, no, my stick is broken. And then we see Bonnie Dedenne looking for sticks and everybody else. But Brakeson doesn't want anything like that. I think Pancham brings a stick up to Brakeson. And Brakeson's like, hmm, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure, but no, basically. And then basically we see images of, I think, Jingaro. Jingoro, Jingoro, J J I N G O R O. I think that's Jingoro or Jingoro or something of that nature. And it looks like he has breaks and stick, and he's like trying to fix it because in the box he had breaks and broken stick. And then right before the actual scene of when he was like looking at something, he's all like, "Yeah, oh, how do we do this? Oh yeah, it looks like we could do something with this." That's kind of what I kind of got the feeling out of that image or whatever. And, and Gallade is uh, his Pokemon, apparently, because later in the preview we get Brakeson battling against Gallade. Brakeson doesn't actually ever stick out. Uh, it's in her, like, uh, tail or whatever. And Brakeson is using her moves that she uses otherwise without a stick. I think Flamethrower she uses. We don't see that. We see basically Scratch, and I think we also see... No, I don't think we see Impower. I think what we see is... Uh, 
All we see, I think, is just scratch, basically. I think it's scratch that Fennekin used to have that Breaks and still should have access to. There is some sparklies going on in the preview. I don't know if I'm going to get an image of that. But some people are speculating that Breaks and might learn a new move in this particular episode. I'm not really sure. I mean, it's possible, but I don't really see it. I think this is just going to be development for Brakeson, just because Brakeson really hasn't had any real development lately and has just been basically there. And the only personality traits that we've seen of Brakeson have been basically just a more mature version of Fennekin. Fennekin would get, like, bitter and angry. You know, she was angry at Ash, I guess, because Ash may have been a little bit insulting to Serena or Fennekin herself. So Fennekin wasn't exactly happy with that. Brixen really hasn't outright been angry outside of the Pokemon showcase where Jesse basically shoves Serena to the ground. Brixen was a little angry there, but outside of that, Brixen has been a pretty happy Pokemon, a determined Pokemon, a very encouraging Pokemon. Kind of like those particular traits going on throughout the episodes, but this is the first episode that we've seen where it's actually going to heavily focus on Brixen and we're going to get more facets to Brakeson's personality, so that's really good. I'm not sure I'm too looking forward to this, because this doesn't really seem like something I'd be really happy about. I mean, yeah, I know, the Fennekin line is my favorite starter of 6th generation, but the problem is it's with Serena, so I can't entirely be happy, because the moment Fennekin happened, and the moment we knew Serena was going to be a main cast. It was like very obvious that Serena was going to get a Fennekin. I'm like, no, give her Chespin. Give her Chespin. Please, God, give her Chespin. But no, she ended up with the typical choice of Fennekin because girls have to have the cute little fox feminine Pokemon like Vulpix, only Brock out of Vulpix. <sighs> So, I, I mean, I've gotten over it that Serena has Fennekin and Brakeson, and, and, you know, it's really nice. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with Brakeson doing well with Serena, or Serena doing well with Brakeson, but at the same time, it's just that I'm not too excited for this episode. So I'll watch this, but I don't expect to be amazed and shocked and stuff. But at least, hey, for all those people out there, at least we're getting to see more a uh, facets of Brakeson's personality, which is always a good thing. So anyway, I think this pretty much covers up. I don't know when my next Pokemon video is going to be. I'm probably going to focus on my gaming videos a little bit as much as I can and probably not make other videos because I don't have any other videos that I could make. Unless you have a suggest suggestion. Pokemon or non-Pokemon related or anything. So anyway, I think that pretty much covers this particular video. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I'm Dustin Benzel, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.